Well, welcome to part three of conducting a literature review lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to talk uh, to you about how to locate quality literature resources. So how do you get those primary resources or those journal articles or peer review articles? All right, so there's a couple different ways that you do this. Is uh, You want to use the FPU's electronic databases. And there is a link in Moodle to get to what's called the article search tool in the uh, our library. I have a video that teaches you how to use this. So you should watch that video. There is also some databases in our library that I'll also that I also have a video of that teach you how to find good articles. Now in the uh, database, the one I use the most is what's called EBSCO Host Research Databases. There are some other ones. Feel free to use those. As you'll see in that video, that when you click the EBSCO Host Research Databases, you can select even more databases. Now these uh, databases that are listed below the act uh, are the ones that I would suggest that you use for our graduate program. Uh, the Academic Search Premier, ERIC, which stands for Educational Resources Information Center. So these would be articles that are focused on education. Uh, health Source, so this would be a lot of nursing uh, education uh, articles. Uh, nurses have done a fantastic job doing research on how to educate student nurses. Uh, so if you're doing any kind of medical education, so athletic trainers or sports med, uh, this is a really good source. Medline with full text, this will have a lot of good information for a lot of the exercise science, uh, obviously athletic training and other medical things. The sport psych articles and a sport info or sorry, psych articles and psych info, sorry. Those articles obviously are for psychology, so if your research area is on a psychological basis, you could use those. I mean, I just click them all. You'll see in the video that you just can click them all. The sports discus with full text. Uh, this one has more of the... Uh, stuff for sports obviously but this goes beyond just sport it has anything to do with our area in kinesiology so it's very good other way you can find resources is some reliable internet sites and i've put the links for the scout s-o-s-i-g the virtual library and google books in um, our class so you can use those and again, our textbook talks about what each one of those are for. And as I talked about earlier, when we're talking about descriptors, you should use very broad terms to begin with. As I said earlier, too, uh, use a thesaurus. That look up uh, synonyms. I have a hard time with that word. Words that are similar to the, the word that you're looking up. If you're looking up exercise, uh, what's a, um, a similar word to exercise that you can use when you're doing your actual search for articles. And again, you need to look beyond just PE, athletic training, coaching, sport administration. We need to go beyond that. I talked about that in the part two of this presentation. Um, we have to be able to look at an and analyze research in other, from other areas and be able to interpret what the information is telling us and understand how educational theory in other areas is still applicable to educational theory in our area. And so that is uh, one of the things that you need to be able to do in this graduate program. Now, my recommendation is when you're doing a search, there is a 
way you can just limit your research uh, searching to full text articles. I would start there first and get as many of those full text articles as you possibly can and download them. Create a file, a folder on your uh, computer. You may want to even label, uh, have a folder within folder. You may want to have a folder for the grad program in general, then have a folder for each class, then within each class, maybe even for assignments or uh, whatever. Whatever organization that works well in your brain, keep yourself organized. So you can download the full text. You have it. You can read it on your computer. If you need to print it out, you can print it out. And so you have it have it accessible to yourself. So if you can't get full text, um, and it's not available full text, you can do an interlibrary loan. And we do this, I do this quite a bit. And on our website, you'll see that there is a link on the library website, there's a link to uh, do an interlibrary loan. You need to have uh, information on the, the author's name names it could be more than one author the year of publication the journal article name or the title of the journal i should the title of the article excuse me i also need to have the the journal articles you know if it's journal of athletic training for example you need to have that uh, the year it was published and maybe they'll give you the page numbers uh, if you have that. So any information you can provide to help the librarians find your uh, article, you do that. Um, and, and the turnaround's pretty quick. Sometimes it can be the next day or it can be that day. Depends on how fast they can get it, but you'll get it fairly quickly. Now, one of the ways I have used, and most people who are doing research do, is that if you find a really really good article that's just it's hitting everything that you're interested in for your particular research go to the reference list for that article uh, look at the areas where they were citing the reference in uh, in the paper that you're reading the article that you're reading uh, go find those articles and read them don't assume that that author actually provided you all the information from that particular previous article. So that's a good way to get more references. Go back and find other references that have been cited. You can also go to a library, an academic library. If you live here in Fresno, you can come to our library and you'll get help to get help from a research library. And you can sit down with them, tell them what you need help with, and, um, and they can help you out. You can also call our library. Uh, Ann Guther is one person, and their phone number is there. You can also just call the library uh, in general. That, that's the 559-453-2000 is our main switchboard, and you can ask for the Hebert Library. And tell them that you're a graduate student uh, in kinesiology, and I need some help finding some articles or Anything you can do to help me with this, I mean, that's what they're there for. That's, they're there to help you, too. Even though you're online, you can still uh, reach out to them and get help from them. So, summary of this whole lecture series. In the first part, we, I talked about how do we conduct literature reviews, or why we even do them. What's the purpose of them? Um... And I expanded that not just for literature reviews for a thesis or a dissertation, but also expanded it that the material in this this particular lecture and the textbook can be used for any assignment in this graduate program and should be also used to make decisions at your work. Because we should make wise decisions based on uh, quality articles. And, uh, materials. Part two, we talked about a method of conducting your literature review, some steps for doing that, and also how to write a literature review. And in this particular lecture, I talked about how to find resources using the Fresno Pacific University's uh, library. Again, I have a couple more videos that 
that actually shows you how to get into our electronic databases uh, through Moodle and directly from the Fresno Pacific uh, website.